Hi everyone. The back can hear me from the back. Can right? Okay. So uh, first of all, thank I said for inviting me for the today's talk. I it's it's nice to uh, speak in the first I was meet up in uh, Singapore Power. So my topic is today is about like the diversity in the apps. Look, we all building apps and but sometimes we just trying to be cool so then we forget w some segments of the, our user base we only focus on like a similar mindset people but that's n not the way a real audience is so yeah so i'm going to talk about how to reach a more diverse user base in your apps so a little bit about myself um uh my name is madushan uh, I'm currently working at Grab as in iOS team and I'm also focusing on accessibility at Grab. Uh, yeah, so the outline of the talk is like uh, first is about that uh, how diverse the iOS user base is so, and how we can find out like different segments of user base and how we can cater them. And next I'm trying to uh, focus on like some stuff that built into the iOS that supports more customization. So it, it fits different segments of the users. So uh, if, you, if you compare the iOS and Android, like iOS has been supporting uh, these set of features from the very beginning, like accessibility and the dynamic contents and the localization, these kind of things they have been supporting from the very beginning. They have done a very impressive jobs in that term. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'll try to skip the implementation part, like, so I'm not going to uh, have some live demo, coding demo. I'll put some samples in the GitHub so that you guys can prefer later if you want. Uh, yeah, so I'll try to go this presentation very quickly. So first is like, so as you all know, user base speak different languages. So, but in, in what we need to think is like uh, only giving English app is never going to be enough because now the user base is more diverse than ever. So you will find more Chinese speaking users, more like Hindi speaking users and more Arabic. Yeah, so the idea is like you need to localize your app, no excuse. Then uh, abilities. So abilities are different among different users. Like for example, some users are visually impaired, some users are colorblind, some users are physically disabled, some users are hearing disabled. So how we can cater these set of users with our apps without, I mean, uh, only, without only focusing on a typical user. So to give some numbers about the some disabilities around the world, so if you talk about the color blindness, one in 12 men is color blind. So this is like a huge number if you like, so uh, so one in 12, so you can do the math for se around 7 billion population. So it's a huge number. So you need to think about these people. So if the point is, if you, use color alone to represent to any kind of state, that's not, not going to be enough. So you need to give some additional parameter that differentiate two status rather than the color. And yeah, so women is, yeah, surprisingly women get clear vision than men. So it's number is one in 200. Yeah, so there's some genetic reason behind that. Yeah, I'm not going to explain that. You can just Google and find out why this happens. <laughs> And then region is region and the culture. So when you're using colors, yeah, fo I mean, focus your target audience and uh, use color in a more appropriate way. One example is, so if you think about the Chinese culture, red is um, a very good, uh, uh, like, yeah, so they, they like this red color. It's a lucky color, something like that. So if you, if you see the apple, stock uh, the trading app, like 
so for English users, uh, a decrease of a stock value indicated in red. But if you set your localizations to Chinese, so you see the increase of the stock price in red, decrease in green. So that means that they, they, they're thinking about this, the different cultures and use color appropriately. So you should, I mean, you should take care of these stocks. And next is cognitive ability. So everyone is not uh, familiar with these devices as us. So we think like, okay, this, is, this feature is supposed to be figured out very easily by user, but that's not the real case. But they, they're not familiar with these devices. You need to, I mean, you need to provide your UI in a way that's very inclusive and very intuitive. Yeah, in, for, for new apps, so my suggestion is like, so take some apps like users are mostly familiar with. For example, iPhone call app, it's, it's kind of app that everyone is using. So if you, ch if you check that app, so you can swipe, I mean, swipe left in a contact to delete it. So users know that that use interaction. So then, I mean, if you try to use a different thing to delete, so they will, they will find a hard time to figuring out. So, but if you use that, the, the same UX behavior that users are familiar with, they will very easily figure out. When you have more users, like when, when you have reached millions audience, then, then you can start customizing your apps in a, your own way. So you start with something that don't, don't go against the, the default user behaviors. Yeah, so with that, that's some context about how diverse the user base is. So is one app enough for everyone? Yeah, probably not, but can we, can we build different apps for different audience? We, we, we can't, even if we can, Apple won't want us to do that because they won't like that same app in different flavors appears in the app store, like in different names, but yeah. But instead of doing that, they give vast variety of options to do that. Like, so they, I mean, we can use many settings and many APIs to customize our uh, one app that, that can cater many audiences. Yeah, th this, this is very good example. So if you, this is actually today's widget for the weather app. So if you take, this is the same app and it appears, this is an example of four different uh, status. The first one is the default. And if you compare the first one to second one, second one is the iPhone settings app has some settings called reduced transparency. So this usually some users, they don't like the transparency at all. So the reason is one is can be their personal like preference and uh, and the second thing can be some something to do with their vision capabilities they might find it hard to read content in the transparent content so if if you enable that settings this is how the same app looks in the in the second uh, screenshot and if you check the this one so this is how the same thing so if you change your localization to a right to left language, like this is Hebrew, the Israeli language, so the content align automatically from right to left. So how you can do that? So in order to do this, you need to use the API properly. If you use, for example, if you use auto layout properly, you will have it for free. Otherwise, if you, if you try to implement your UI using code like without using auto layout, like fixed margins and fixed alignments, then you have to implement this from the scratch. So that's, that's something very important that you need to keep in mind that when you are beginning your app, so if you, if you decide not to go with auto layout, so later when you reach a more global audience, you will have to take care of these things. So that's very important you keep in mind at the beginning to these kind of things. Yeah, the, this, the fourth one is like, so you can enable some settings in the apps, like it's called ball text enable. So it's a system wide setting. So if you enable that, all fonts that support the dynamic fonting, font dynamic typing will give you the ball text throughout your device. So this is, yeah, I can read really good example. 
So the the idea behind those four screenshots is that you need to you need to support the dynamic content and the adaptive layout. So adaptive layout means like so if you for example say you 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 are writing a universal app that works both on iPhone and Android. So if you use adaptive layout properly, so when when a user rotate the device and also when it comes from the iPhone to I iPad the UI feel looks 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 very appealing throughout the ecosystem. Uh, okay, so when it comes to uh, localization, so there's a very important class in the foundation library called NS Formatter. There are several subclasses that's inherited from this NS Formatter class that that will give you uh, uh, these. Uh, many localizations and the regional preferences UI for free. So, yeah. So this is one example. So if you use this NS date formatter, which is a subclass. Oh, now it's not NS. So with the shift three, it's no longer NS. So it's it's a date formatter. So if you use this class, for instance, so you have two choices. You can have a fixed date format like the first one. Is a, is a fixed string that we can use, or you can use the the API provided styles. So l assume that you do in the first in the first way. So if you do that way, the, this is not the result you will end up. So in in the Chinese localization, so if you use this one, these two Chinese characters will appear at the end. So that's not the correct way. I think the Chinese people agree. So. The, the correct way is that these the these two characters should come first in the in Chinese language. So if you use this style industry, so you will get th that for free. So always try to use these uh, instances from uh, in inherited classes from uh, the uh, the formatter class. So th this will give a lot of features like this. For example, currency I in some languages the currency symbol comes first. In some languages, currency symbol comes after the digits. So, if you use uh, proper formatted classes, you need, you don't need to take care of that. The system frameworks will take give that for free. Yeah. So you need to do this internationalization, internationalization for right, and otherwise, you, you in your code you have to uh, you, you have to implement this in in the if, as like checking the language, if the, if the language is this, do this, if otherwise do this. Right. Okay, for uh, when it comes to language, so this is very important, like uh, user can have in, in the system settings, one is that the, they can give a default language, for example, I, I give English, and also they can give a preferred language in, in order they prefer. So this is important for apps. Like th this will allow apps to localize in languages that that are not even available in the system language. Yeah. For example, the, the preferred language list has a lot more languages than the languages available in the in the default language. So this will give apps the chance to localize in many more languages. And so how this works is like, uh, and also this also has a region part. So these three are really important. So the, uh, here user define like how he likes to see you app. So we need to read these settings and give a, give a UI that match these settings. So and if uh, the one example is if I say that my preferred region is Singapore, I, 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 I'm saying that the currencies in apps I, I would like to be in Singapore dollars, like, and also the date format. I would like to be in a Singapore standard format. So, yeah. So, in in your localization files. So w when you are going to localize, so you have this. Uh, yeah. For example, let's say Chinese. So you have many different options, like uh, uh, here is the main settings, that here are the additional settings. So this is for the simplified and the traditional Chinese. And 
what are these like? So if this is the traditional Chinese, but there are some special two characters after the language code. Yeah, that is actually the regional code. So, uh, and if you check, it, yeah, so there's a Singapore option as well. So, so when you're localizing, so you first need to localize in the general language, in the ch ch traditional Chinese and the simplified Chinese, then if you want to have some special cases, like for example, if you want to have the Singapore flavored singlish stuff, so you can assign in this file. So it will give more personal, like more personalized, more regionalized experience to your app. Like if a user specified his 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 region is Singapore, he will see some some like more customized stuff in the app. Yeah. So when okay, so this thing is about when it comes to localization, how how to handle the plural and singular cases. Like for example, assume that you have some label that 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 assign that that says the number of friends online. So it can be one friend is online or two friends are online. So usually, how we in the localization, like uh, so we we have some formatted text that we can assign and assign this one or two value dynamically. But how are we going to handle this thing? Is R and this case. In, in the plural case, we need to add extra s here. So one case, well, one way of doing this is like check the number of friends. So if it's a plural, assign a different string, and if if it's singular, assign a different string. But you don't need to do that really because the, there's a way that the upper SDK provided that we can use to handle this situation very easily. Yeah, th this in you can you can have a file called localizable string dict and in this is actually the plist file so in this file so you can say that how you how it should look like for the plural uh, singular and the plural cases so i'm saying that this is my string key the uh, this number of friends online so this is the actual key for the string and here is how you Assign variables in the plist, and here I mentioned that in the singular case, a string should be this, and in the plural case, string should be this. So then, it will automatically, based on the number you are giving it. If you give one, it will use this format. If you give a number more than one, it will use this format. So it's very important to use this file if you ha have such cases in your app. And it's more than that because some languages handle these various cases differently. Like some languages handle uh, in case of zero, it's, it can be really different. In case of few, some languages can handle this case differently than others. So you can use this set of keys to assign a value that, that will automatically fetch based on the number. And yeah, so when you are localizing for right to left languages, it's important to use auto layout. So otherwise, you, you have to lay out, you have to recalculate your layout and do it in the code that if the language is Hebrew or Arabic, align my UI in this way, otherwise this way. But if you use auto layout properly, you will get this for free. Like so. When when a user set the language to right to left languages, it will automatically turn around the UI, and it will see in the right to left manner. And when it comes to the abilities, so uh, yeah, there there are many features that you need to uh, care about. One is voiceover. So uh, actually, I covered some. Uh, stuff about the voiceover in my previous talk in the, in the in the same dev scout so maybe uh, if anyone interested about supporting the voiceover users like visually impaired users uh, you can check that talk it's it should be available in the engineering SG website uh, yeah and other things are visual accommodation these are like so enable system wide ball settings or reduce transparency or uh, and also there's a settings called reduce motion so this is for like 
Okay, so here's a very, it is a very uh, interesting use case. Like, so if some user enables the reduced motion, uh, one thing that user can be some user that hate these animations, and or maybe he wants to save the battery life from the animation, or or this can be a user who suffered from epilepsy. So if someone suffered from epilepsy, if you give some animations with a high rate, high frame rate, this use, it can trigger this epilepsy in a, in a few seconds time. So that's, that's, I mean, that's something that you need to take in mind that if you have, I mean, very moving animations, so you need to check that settings, the radio, if the radio transparency is enabled, you, you need to reduce the animation rates and maybe avoid the animation at all. Uh, okay, f for the demo, I'm not going to do some code here. So I have some results screenshots from the demo app I created to showcase these stops. So I'll show the screenshots now because the time's running and I I'll share the code in the GitHub. So, and I'll share the link in the in the Facebook group or the Meetup <coughs> website, yeah. So he, he's a very small demo app I've created. So this is how it looks like in uh, English language, and the region is Singapore. The first case I'm using the fixed formatted day. So yeah, it's it's, it's very uh, usual. So the second one is the date field I assigned from the date style, not a fixed format. And okay, the the third row it is just just I'm using some image icon in the column, and the the next two I'm as this this is the subtitle, this is the title. So I'm using the same string here in both locations. So it's supposed to get handle this grammar correctly for me if I'm using the the correct uh, APIs and the. The next one is the decimal formatter. So this also can be different based on the language. For example, if you if you take the Swedish and some other languages, so they use comma here instead of the dot. So you need to you need to handle these situations. Uh, and also for the currency, some currencies use this the currency formatter at the beginning, and some currencies use at the end. Yeah, so this is the how it looks like when I said the language, the, the simplified Chinese, and the region is China. So as you can see, the fixed formatted date, so it still used these two characters at the end, but when I use the style instead, it, it, it gives me that the, lo the, the proper localization for free. So yeah, th that's a very cool feature. And yeah, the rest of the things are the same. Yeah, so this is also the currency symbol. This is not something that I'm hard coding. It, I'm using the uh, number formatter used with the currency style. It will give you the appropriate, si appropriate currency symbol for free. So you, that's, that's very easy to use these features. And this is how it looks like in the Hebrew, the Israeli language. So uh, here, the, the most interesting case, yeah, of course, it's aligned. Because, okay, the first case, why you see these strings still in English, because I haven't localized these things. I only, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to demo only the, the subtitle case. Because if I, if I use the proper uh, localized files, it, this should be, uh, I mean, this should be in the Hebrew language. But uh, here, the interesting part is if you check with the previous image, if you pay attention to this image, yeah, you can see that actually the image also flipped over. So the book binding is in the left side in this image, and when it, when it goes to the right to left language, it, it goes to the left. So how how you can handle these things? So <coughs> this is very very easy to do. Like so, in the in the images, you can give extra options that you can give two images. The in, in the right to left languages use this image and left to right languages use this image. That's it, like the Apple will know what's the left to right language, what's the right to left language, and it will pick the right image for you. And okay, this is how it's 
uh, looks like in the Swedish. So if you check uh, here, instead of George, it is comma, and also the card symbol goes at the end. And also, if you if you know about the date format, so the Swedish people like so instead of they, they, they I think they prefer to use the 24 hour clock so instead of using AM PM so it use simply the 24 hour clock time format yeah so that's roughly about it like so the so uh, here are the things that we didn't cover but uh, important to mention that you, you can look out uh, the Apple has this new measurement and units API I think only iOS 10 onwards, this this super cool. Like so, you can use like energy conversions and yeah, temperature conversions. Yeah, w all lots of features. It's it's a it's a really good library to look at. And also, we didn't cover all aspect of accessibility. Accessibility is very wide topic. That like there are many areas that you need to think about. And and yeah, so it's. Uh, I mean, when when it comes to accessibility, don't don't think like so. Will there be enough users with visual impairment that who will use my service? No, do it as a service. The, the people will love to use the technology as us. So it's it's take it as a responsibility of yours that give the same experience or almost the same experience to everyone, regardless of their accessibility. Yeah. So I I have one of my colleague working. Yeah, a few decks next to me who's visually impaired and is still a developer that, yeah, when, when I work on some stuff, some feature, like I in our app that improved accessibility, that it, it's really impressive that how much he loves it. So, yeah, so y you, you'll never know that a simple enhancement you do for in terms of accessibility will be a great, I mean, great benefit for these users. So uh, think about accessibility, don't skip it. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, the we didn't uh, we didn't cover the power of auto layout. How to use the auto layout properly to support this right to left cases, and also testing and auditing for internationalization. So you can simply yeah these things. I mean WWDC got great videos for these cases. So these things are the stuff we didn't cover, but still important to note that you guys can check later. Yeah, so that's uh, it from me basically. So I want to, uh, the message I want you guys to take out is like, so let's make these apps and the experience we are creating better for everyone. Don't focus on a on the small set of users. T I mean, care about this wide uh, diverse user base and do something for everyone. So I want to thank, okay, uh, to S Singapore Power uh, for hosting the meetup, and also a special thanks to the Engineering SG. They guys are recording most of the text videos in Singapore. If you check their website, it's 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 full of very good content. So I know these guys looking for volunteers. I was also trying to, but I couldn't find much time to do that. But if anyone willing to volunteer put their efforts to these guys, like, yeah, feel free to can thank, he's the guy started it. Mike, yeah, <laughs> special <laughs> thanks to these guys. And yeah, so I, I would happy to take any questions if you guys got any. Okay. Uh, so some of the APIs are very OS specific, as you mentioned, right? Like uh, measurement units. Yeah. Some of the other APIs are very much uh, particular version of iOS specific, right? And then if you're supporting iOS version lower than that, uh -huh. let's say you want to support iOS 8 on more users, right? You still need to write the health condition or basically you need to still uh, uh, write it normally how you would do without using this API, right? So what's your thoughts on this? Okay, but so I haven't, because if you're supporting your apps iOS 8 onwards, the most of the things are there, but these special cases like measurement and units, yeah, unfortunately it's iOS 10 onwards, so in that case, yeah, you have to feel that pain. There's no choice, like some libraries already there on the GitHub that cover this case for us, so you can simply use them, but 
you, you are almost fine if you use if you have targets are you are you onwards yeah i think it, you're fine but most of the cases i think that's the case because in in that case i think we are very lucky because if you ch if you check the android user base yeah they mm -hmm. still have to support the very old versions so i get this complaint from my wife she's doing android yeah like so yeah so in this case we are really lucky because if you check the charts for the ios adaptation i think ios 8 is it's a it's a very good uh, a minimum version you can use yeah any more questions like it's quite curious how you do the auto layout for the image left to the right like the image. yeah that the, the image just image is just about the asset catalog so if you use this yeah, the, yeah. yeah. so the, okay you mean this no no i understand but yeah the, Oh, from left to right. oh, it's it's something that the iOS frameworks will give you a free. If you have to use the auto layer, and um, I mean you have to you have to keep in mind this this there's going to be a case for the right to left language. But if you align using auto layer from left to right, so then you need to do th you don't need to think about uh, so left to right, right to left because it will stop oh, for you. So the will become the leading. Yeah, so it comes for free, but in case you're using a toll layout. But in other cases, like, I think, so w when you are using a toll layout, you can, there's a tick called the relative to margin. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. So that's also very important. That some, that's also something that developers skip. So that th that's becomes very important when, you, when you're writing universal apps. Like, if you use the margin, so when you open your apps in the iPad, it uses a very uh, bit wider margin than the iPhone, so it's very important when it comes to when when you have some long paragraph. So it's it's hard for users to if you uh, line if if your paragraph line length is very long, it's hard for users. So users prefer a, a bit short uh, line length paragraph. So it will give that for free if you if you tick that uh, related to margin tick. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Just curious, are you able to localize the image according to regions? Image according to region? Yeah, like how you localize the street. Are you able to do that? Uh, okay, that's... Oh, yeah. So you have to change the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but okay. W when you're using the image, like okay, uh, so assume that you, you are having the image in the project file itself. So y there's options to localize. So it what usually if uh, assume that there's a string file, and also uh, if you take a storyboard. So when you localize it, it will create a string file, separate string file for the language. So I haven't tried that, but I think you can do the same thing for the image, but. You cannot do this in when you are imagine the asset catalog. So that's a special case that I need to check that out. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll try and put that in the source code in the GitHub. You can localize image by using access. Yeah, but uh, we have to double check this. This is it. Yeah. But you can localize image. Yeah. So y you have to localize. I mean, you have to have separate images if your image contains text. So that's something that better to avoid because your text get, I mean, this, I mean, pixelated sometimes. So better to put text in the labels as much as possible. Yeah, but if you have edge case that you have to put a text in the image, yeah, then you have to give a separate image for each language you are using. Yeah. Any more questions from the audience? Okay, if not, yeah, I, I'll wind up and finally uh, some message <laughs> from my employer. <laughs> like this, some my manager requested me to food here. So if you are <laughs> finding jobs, like we are hiring aggressively these days, so feel free to go and apply. Yeah, thank you. Cool. <laughs>